Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pot, the chemistry guru. Now, for this week, we want to discuss the rate concentration graph of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. So, let's take a look at this graph here. Now, what we have is a very typical rate concentration graph for an enzyme catalyzed reaction. My y axis will be the initial rate of the reaction, x axis will be the concentration of the reactant. And you notice this graph. It's pretty interesting. At the beginning, the rate of the reaction increases when the concentration of my reactant increases, and eventually it starts to taper off when the concentration of the reactant becomes higher and higher. The rate of the reaction starts to stabilize and it doesn't change anymore. So, what we want to do in this video is we want to explain why does the rate of the reaction changes in this way with respect to the concentration of my reactant. Now this graph, we can actually split this into two portions. Let's take a look at that. We can treat this as a combination of two independent graphs. Now the first portion, at the beginning, when the concentration of the reactant is low, rate of the reaction increases as the concentration of the reactant goes up. So I've graph number one. You notice this is a straight line passing through the origin. And we have a gradient here it increases as the concentration of the reactant increases. Now, the other graph in the second part, where the concentration of the reactant is high, you notice this is a horizontal graph. There's no change in the rate of the reaction as the concentration of the reactant changes. This is graph number two. You notice this intersection between graph number one and graph number two, it actually coincides or corresponds to the concentration of our enzyme. So what we want to do is we want to consider part by part how come for graph number one, the earlier portion, when the concentration of the reactant is lower than the concentration of the enzyme, why does the graph look like this? Increases as the concentration of the reactant goes up. And the second portion, when the concentration of the reactant exceeds or is greater than the concentration of my enzyme, why would the rate stabilizes, it doesn't change anymore. So we want to talk about this part by part. The first portion here, when the concentration of the reactant is lower than concentration of enzyme. Let us have this scenario. Let's say I have four enzymes. All right? I have four enzymes to catalyze the reaction, convert this reactant to the product as represented with the shape. So my reactant is a square. This enzyme can catalyze this square and convert this to a triangle product. So at the beginning, when the concentration of my reactant is one, let's say the concentration of my reactant is one, I have four enzymes. So at any one time, one of these reactants can be catalyzed to form product. So I'll have a certain rate of the reaction. The rate of the reaction maybe is here. Now what happens when I double the concentration of my reactant? When you have two reactants, you notice I have four enzymes and I have more than enough enzymes to catalyze the reaction. So when there's an increase in the concentration of my reactant, I have enough enzymes to handle this increase in the concentration of my reactant. And therefore, two of them will be catalyzed to form product or form two products per unit time. And when the concentration for the reactant is two, you notice the rate of the reaction will go up because both of them can be catalyzed per unit time. So I expect the rate of the reaction to increase. What happens if you increase the concentration of the reactant by another unit? So when I have three reactants, if this is three, then same thing, I still have available enzyme that is not fully utilized, all right? So I can have three enzymes working per unit time to convert three of my reactants to form three products. So this will mean the rate of the reaction will continue to increase. And this is the reason why this first portion here, you notice uh, the rate of the reaction is actually directly related to the concentration of the reactant. When you increase the concentration of my reactant, there will be a proportionate increase in the rate of the reaction because I have enough enzymes to handle this increase in the concentration of my reactant. So when I increase the concentration of the reactant to four, I have four enzymes, one more enzyme is not utilize. So this enzyme number four can also be utilized to convert to form product. 
So the rate of the reaction will continue to increase, increase all the way until here. So you notice this first portion, when the concentration of the reactant is less than the concentration of the enzyme, when you increase the concentration of my reactant, I'll have enough enzymes to handle this increase in the concentration of this reactant. So therefore, there will be a corresponding and proportional increase in the rate of the reaction. And this is the reason why the first part of the graph will be something like this, increases as the concentration of the reactant goes up. Now, since this rate is directly proportional to the concentration of my reactant, this is actually first order with respect to reactant. The concentration for the reactant increases, there will be a proportional increase in the rate of the reaction. So the first part of this graph, when the concentration of the reactant is less than enzyme concentration, then we say that the reaction is first order with respect to my reactant. Now how about the second part of the graph, where the concentration of my reactant exceeds or is greater than the concentration of my enzyme. Now previously our scenario is four reactant, so four of these enzyme will be utilized to convert to form four products. Correct? Now you notice what happens now is all my enzymes are fully utilized. Now what if I increase the concentration of the reactant to five units? Can five of this reactant be catalyzed and be converted to four products? Now you notice uh, if I increase the concentration of the reactant to five units, but all my enzymes are fully utilized, so I don't have any spare enzyme to handle this catalysis. Even if you have five reactant, at any one time, I can have four catalysis. So the rate of formation of my product actually don't increase anymore. And what this means is if let's say the concentration for my reactant is here, if let's say this is five, since I only have four enzyme, catalysis will only be four reactant per unit time, and the rate of the reaction will be kept at forming four products per unit time. And this means that if the rate of the reaction for concentration equals to four, it is this level, for concentration for my reactant equals to 5, it will be the same level, it's not going to change anymore. I only can catalyze 4 reactant per unit time because I have only 4 enzymes to handle this catalysis. This idea actually is the same if I continue to increase the concentration of my reactant, if I have 6 reactant, same thing if I throw in 6 guys, it's not going to increase the rate of the reaction because all my enzymes are fully utilized, so the rate of formation of my product will be kept at 4 per unit time. I have 6 reactants, the rate of the reaction stays the same. If I have 7 reactants, the rate of the reaction stays the same. It's not going to change anymore. If I have 8, 9, 10 reactants, you notice the rate of the reaction will not change anymore and it stabilizes and it reaches this maximum point when the concentration of the reactant is greater than the concentration of the enzyme. Now we call this state the saturation. In terms of catalysis for reactions, this is not a good thing eh? because if I want to increase the rate of the reaction, I want the rate of the reaction to increase when I'm adding more reactant. So ideally, we don't want to reach a state where the concentration of the enzyme becomes less than the concentration of the reactant. It means that if I continue to increase or I continue to add more reactant, I'm not going to affect the rate of the reaction anymore. So usually involving catalysis, we don't really want to reach this state of saturation where the rate of the reaction doesn't change anymore if you continue to add more reactant. You notice this second part of the graph, since the rate of the reaction is independent of reactant concentration, you increase more reactant, there's no change in the rate of the reaction. So in the second part of the graph, the reaction is zero order with respect to the reactant. All right, so if I come back to the original graph that we have, then we are able to appreciate why is the shape of the graph in this way. Now, even though it looks like a smooth curve, but it is actually made up of a combination of two graphs. First portion, when the concentration of the reactant is less than the concentration of the enzyme, then the rate is a rate constant K multiplied by the concentration of my reactant. All right? I know that when there's an increase in the concentration of the reactant, there will be a corresponding increase in the rate of the reaction. So therefore, this is first order with respect to reactant. Before saturation, when the concentration of reactant is less than enzyme concentration. On the second portion, when the concentration of the reactant hits this enzyme, then I know that saturation will occur. And beyond that, when you continue to add more reactant and the concentration of the reactant increases, 
we know that now the limiting factor is the concentration of the enzyme. I don't have enough enzymes to handle this increase in the concentration of the reactant, and therefore the rate of the reaction will be at a maximum point. It doesn't change anymore. Saturation occurs. So rate becomes a constant term, not affected by reactant concentration anymore. So we say that this is zero order with respect to the reactant. All right, so that was the discussion involving the rate concentration graph of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. So we want to keep in mind, even though it looks like a smooth curve, but it is not explained using one concept. It is actually made up of a combination of two graphs. The first portion where it is first order with respect to the reactant, and the second portion where it is zero order with respect to the reactant. So if you've learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.